What if Minecraft had realistic gravity? Well, here's every change you'd see with the new physics. With realistic physics, you can only travel about 10 blocks in a row before the blocks begin to fall, much in the same way that we're used to using scaffolding. And that means that when you try to build a bridge in Minecraft, you're gonna need to actually have those realistic support beams to keep it up. Otherwise, if you do this without, it's not gonna work. Which sure might help to make some of your bridges look better, but if you're someone who likes to speed bridge, especially in something like Bed Wars, I don't think you'll be able to do that anymore. After all, it's not much of a speed bridge if you have to waste time to build supports to do it. So you're probably best to try to use something like an ender pill to help you clear gaps in the future. Now, if you were to drop a gravity block on top of a villager's roof, it'll slide down the steps and land on the ground instead, which I guess makes some sense. I mean, we don't have slopes in Minecraft. This is the closest we got, but I also never thought that the stairs would be this slippery. And at the very least, I'm thankful that we never fall down them in the same way. And with this new feature for stairs, anvils can finally destroy crops. Since in the past, if you dropped an anvil on a crop, then that wheat grass would be able to break it all the same. And I doubt I'm the only one confused why 31 iron ingots can never stand up against a couple of seeds. But now with the new physics, if you drop an anvil on top of a crop, it'll destroy the crop and leave our anvil intact. And now anvils aren't the only block to look out for, because with realistic gravity, basically every block can hit like an anvil. And you'll notice that the higher that a block falls from, the more damage that it can deal to us and to moths. So yes, even if you have yourself a shulker box filled up with 27 stacks of dirt, then that would technically mean that you have 1,700 28 deadly weapons. Which one that saves you from having to spend all this iron the other way? It's hard to argue that you're getting quite the bargain. With realistic block physics, glass is not as good of a building block. And now, if you were to build up a large tower of glass, or even just leave some glass blocks hanging out in the air, as soon as it falls to the ground, they'll shatter on impact. And as you'll notice, the same now happens with leaves too. Which I guess in both cases makes sense, but now you'll want to be extra careful that you have a silk touch pick ready to harvest these when you can. And you won't just be needing silk touch for your glass blocks. Because now if you let any block that needs silk touch to mine fall to the ground, it'll either break into its regular non-silk touch variant or just break entirely. And that also means you have to be very particular in how you place your bees nests. Since without the proper support, they could just fall to the ground and break entirely, giving both us and the bees quite the issue. The way Minecraft used to work is that if you placed a block on top of a bottom slab, you'd get this odd gap between the two blocks. But now that doesn't happen. And it's not because the block now rests on top of the slab, but rather every block that you place on top of a bottom slab will now destroy it. Which if you ask me, seems like an overcorrection. I mean, now you can place leaf blocks on top of an endstone slab and that slab will still get destroyed. Which for endstone being one of the more durable blocks in the game, I don't see why a couple of leaves were able to dispatch it that easily. I mean, we saw how easily leaves broke earlier. To me, it just doesn't make sense. Now, if you were to put in the 12 eyes of ender necessary to build the end portal, it'll make the portal, but you're not gonna be able to go to the end. Since with realistic gravity, the portal just falls if it's unsupported. So now if you wanna make it to the end safely, the way to do this is to put down a bed of blocks underneath where the portal's gonna generate. Generate. But if you break some of the support blocks after you generate the portal, then that'll cause some of the end portal blocks to teleport into the end themselves, which is all just way too meta for me to wrap my head around. And once you get to the end, it's not gonna be a treat over there either. Since here you'll find that the only blocks that defy gravity in this dimension are the obsidian pillars and the endstone island. Everything else obeys the laws of physics until you defeat the dragon. So if you're trying to bridge across the void by using some dirt or stone blocks, you're not gonna be the only one falling to your death in the void. Every block you place comes right down there with you. So let's hope you get an lights are quick, because otherwise exploring this dimension's just gonna be a pain. In the past, if you placed down string, you could support any block on top of that, which could be very helpful for placing down carpets in the air like this, but now you'll find it's not nearly as resilient. And just about any block that you place on top of the string is gonna cause that to snap and the blocks fall down to the floor. And unfortunately, the cobwebs aren't any better, since any block that you place above that will now just fall through the spider silk, much like we would if we were to fall in as well. Now that everything has gravity, if you try to build a piston door in the usual way, everything's is gonna fall apart. And you'll see as much from this basic two by two door example. Even if you understand the redstone, it's not gonna make the cut. And you'll find that the only workaround to get this working in your world is that you must have the pistons both open and closed simultaneously. Otherwise, you're just left with a bunch of redstone bits falling through the cracks. And that'll be especially true if you try to build a door any larger than this one. If you thought it was hard here, it's close to impossible with these other options. Perhaps surprising no one, fly machines no longer work with realistic gravity. Don't get me wrong, you can build them, but once you attempt to launch it, it's not going to go very far through the air. Which not only means that we can't use these machines for flying anymore, but it'll also break their use case in something like a bamboo farm. And much like our piston doors, this also breaks plenty of different entrances and elevators that we would have built otherwise. So for my money, you should save your time and not try to get the slime balls necessary to build one of these. It's not going to do you very much good. Especially since with these new changes, honey and slime blocks are no longer 
longer sticky. And with that small change, they're completely ruined for our use in redstone, which would be bad enough, but for the honey blocks, it's even worse. Since because those take up a smaller size than the slime block, you can no longer place regular blocks on top of them. That'll just cause a whole gravity snafu, and honestly, it's not worth the hassle. And from now on, it might just be worth keeping your honey inside of the bottles anyway. Who knows, if you drink it, maybe it'll help cure the headache that all this causes. If you were to place a stack of trap doors like this, then you're fine, whether that's with realistic gravity or without. But as soon as you accidentally flip that bottom trap door, it's when they're horizontal that you're gonna see a problem. And now the only way to have a stack of trap doors like this is when they're all flipped up to be vertical. Otherwise, the gravity will kick in and all those gaps will start to be a problem as they tumble to the floor, which might just be an issue for this trapdoor and ladder combo that we've built in the past. Though with how weird that thing looks, it might be for the best that it falls apart anyway. As we saw with glass, not all blocks are created equal when it comes to durability. And you'll find as much to be true with these different plants. Since now, if you were to try and drop a melon or a pumpkin from a height any taller than two blocks high, they'll instantly break when they hit the ground, which is pretty satisfying. But perhaps the most annoying change for this is that honeycomb also acts the same way. And considering how cool of a building block that could be, it's a real loss in a builder's arsenal. So if you use it, make sure to treat it like sand. Otherwise, you're out of luck. All right, pop quiz. How do you spawn a wither if there's realistic gravity? Because if you build the shape like you're used to, it's all just gonna fall apart. And that doesn't make for much of a wither. It really just makes a mess. But that's fine because there is a way to still solve this. And now the only way to spawn the wither is to place this T-shape of blocks sideways. But if you're used to spawning withers underneath the bedrock portal in the end, this is nothing new. And honestly, as long as we can still use this easy strategy, that's no skin off my back. I much prefer this anyway. And much the same way as the wither, we can now only spawn our iron golems sideways too. Since if you were to try to place blocks underneath their arms to support them, that doesn't work. It just disables the spawning of the golem. But if you lay it flat on its back, the golem will spawn just right. And honestly, it's safer to place the pumpkin on the ground anyway, since they're a lot more fragile as they come. Now when you go to the nether, you'll notice that things start to fall apart fast. Quite literally. Since even though the netherrack won't fall on us by default, the same can't be said for the blocks that you find in different biomes. And all of a sudden, that makes things like the soul sand valleys, the warped forests, and even the basalt deltas into real treacherous places to explore. And believe me, if the risk of being squashed by a falling block wasn't enough, the amount of lag that this causes could allow you to make other mistakes as well. And really, you're just switching out one pain point for another. I'd say just get your blaze rods and never come back. If you were to find yourself an ice spikes biome, then you're in for a show, because now any of the ice variants, whether that's packed, blue ice, or regular, they'll all break if they fall from a height of more than three blocks. And they also don't generate any water when they fall, which don't get me wrong, is cool to watch, but it's immediately concerning if you want to try to build an ice highway over in the nether. But with how dangerous the nether appears to be these days, it might not have been your first choice for a highway anyway. And the only way that I would consider even doing this is building it up on the nether roof. If it isn't bedrock, I don't trust it. But with all these dangerous blocks that are falling from the sky, how do we save ourselves? Well, strange as it might seem, there's one solution that we can try here, which is that if you place down four leaf blocks in a row like so, then we can break the bottom block and simply walk inside of the tower. Since for whatever reason, the game prevents the third leaf block in the sequence from breaking. And at that point, we're left with a little bit of shelter that can keep us safe from the blocks above. Or at least as safe as a leaf block can keep you. It's not like those are exactly known for their resilience. My personal favorite change for realistic gravity happens if we grab some of these infested blocks. Since while in the base game, these tend to be a pain, if we take these up to a great height and drop them below, you'll notice that when they break on the ground, they can occasionally spawn a silverfish. Which is not only satisfying to see a bunch of these silverfish lose their homes, but it also could add to the horror of the stronghold collapsing in on itself. Picture you're standing there, the roof closing in, and then to make matters worse, you got a bunch of these silverfish that are spawning around you. It'd be a funny sight, if not a little hectic. In the past, we were used to snow blocks and snow layers behaving pretty much the same. I mean, if you placed eight snow layers on top of each other, you couldn't even tell the difference. But that's just not the case anymore. Since now, if we place a block on top of these two examples, you'll notice that the one that we made out of layers will crumble underneath the weight, but with a regular snow block that we crafted like this, it'll work out just fine. But by far the craziest addition with the realistic physics, is that we now have a way to make silly strength or at least make our string pretty silly. Since if you build up a tower of cobwebs like this, and then break the second one from the bottom of the stack, all the rest of the cobwebs will go inside of one another, which when they all drop together, it gives you this very weird visual effect. Until after a few seconds of waiting, the cobwebs will just start placing themselves all over the place, which I can't quite explain, but if you're looking for a way to quickly prank your friend, it's hard to say this one isn't fun to pull off. And with that folks, YouTube thinks that you might like this video, so see if they're right and have a good one, all right?